Hello and welcome back to the channel. And if it's your first time on the channel, my name is Abhi and you are watching Colors of Light. Today we are going to see how we can make a photograph like this using a DSLR and a kit lens. In this video, you're going to see exactly how I do the setup for this and what equipment I'm going to use. But before I start all of this, I just want to say I've never done anything like this before. And I've just seen this on a YouTube channel from a photographer called Lee Hall. He's a Scottish photographer. At least I think he's a Scottish photographer. And I've seen how he does it and I'm just trying to replicate it. In addition to that, I'm going to also show you exactly what things I need or what things I use to make this photograph, which are not so expensive and beginner photographer friendly, let's say. So before we start actually doing anything, let's have a look at the things which we are going to use to make this photo. First, I'll show you the subject, the things which we are going to use for the subject and that setup. And after that, on the second part, I'll show you what equipment we are going to use. Of course, we are going to use a DSLR camera, entry level. This is a 600D. Plus, what else do you will need to make this session a success? So let's start. First of all, as a base, you will need a white plate with a bit depth because we're going to fill some liquid in it. At the moment, dandelions are everywhere. And these are the dandelion clocks, which we are going to use. Not the whole bulb. We're just going to use a small feather and to pick them, we need a clipper. You're not going to be able to see it right now, but we just hold it so, and we have to make it stand here. How do we do that? For that, you can just go to your kid's room and get some Play-Doh. If you don't have kids, you can also buy some blue tack, or you can buy this from a toy store. You just take a little bit of it, make something like this. I'll show it to you in a close-up as well. Right now you can't see it, but you just pick this up with the clipper and stick it on it. It's not as easy. You're going to need some practice, but there you go. And we just stand it here. Well, I'm going to show all of this in detail in close-up, so don't worry about it. Let's go through what all we need. So that's that. <clears throat> we've got plate, we've got dandelion clocks, We've got Play-Doh, we've got clippers, then we've got a syringe, not a usual item to be found in a household, so uh, you might want to get this from a medical store. This one is a bit too big, I've got the wrong one. You might want to have a smaller ones, the thinner ones, the thinner the better because these dandelion clocks are very, very small and that's why it's called macro. Then I have a mixture of milk and water everything will get clear when we get to that point. Very important stuff, towel to wipe just in case you spill it over. So let's put these things to the side. So I hope you've got the list, you've written it down. I have a few more things here. This is going to work as a reflector. You know what I mean when we come to it. And instead of colored papers, I've just got some books because I don't have colored paper. So I just took some books from my son's drawer. That's that. Now, it's never as simple as saying that we're going to use entry-level DSLR and a kit lens because that's not true. Anyone who says this is true, it's not true because you are going to need something more than this to do macro photography. The most important thing you need is a macro lens. Well, the macro lenses are extremely expensive and people like you and me probably can't afford it. I'm not a professional photographer and if you are watching this video, probably you are also not. So what do we do? We go for something called extension tubes, which are extremely cheap in comparison to macro, for, uh, macro lenses. They look like this. They are completely hollow inside. But what they do is they increase the distance between your lens and the sensor. So you put them between your lens and sensor 
that gives you an ability to come very close to your subject and focus on it. So that's why you're gonna need these. And why I'm saying these, because they are extremely cheap. They come in a set of three. You can buy it for 20 euros on Amazon. So if you fancy buying one of these, you can check it out in the description below. These ones are for Canon. You can buy for different models, different cameras. You can simply click on the link below and then from there you can start looking. That will give you a starting point. So this is this. Now, since it's macro, it's going to be extremely close to your subject. The camera shake becomes a big problem. So for that, you need to have a shutter release. This is called a shutter release cable. That's also, I think, 10 or 12 euros. I've got the link in the description as well. Now the thing is you might or might not need a flash. Flash, not this flash, an external flash. Why external flash? Because you're going to need this to reflect the light over to your subject in this manner. So that's again not a very expensive one. This is I think 100 euros worth in comparison to the branded ones which are extremely expensive. But in order to fire this flash you are going to need these things. These are called wireless flash triggers. These ones are from a company called Yongnuo. They come in a pair. Link is also in the description should you feel like buying one. They cost only 35 euros. Yeah, so these are the things which we are going to need to make this a success. I have my fingers crossed that I get a decent enough photograph and we are going to start shooting soon. One thing I've forgotten, to mount this camera on you are going to need a tripod. So let's start, yeah? So let's start how we do this. I'm going to take some Play-Doh, take a little bit of this out, about that much, yeah, so, and then I'm going to take this clipper, and with this clipper I'm going to take one clock or feather or whatever you call it, so there you go, and yes, put it on top of this need to press it a little bit and that's it this stays there it's not very clear on the video right now but it will be soon enough in the photograph so that's how you stand it that's all you need to do here at the moment just need to see that it's sitting properly and that's that because it needs to be covered with the milk solution which we are going to pour on this plate soon enough so now we're going to pour this milk solution on the plate there. I'm being a bit careful because I don't want to make a mess here on the table otherwise my wife will kill me. Uh, that's that. Now if you see this is just perfect. We can see the bottom of the dandelion clock and that's it. Since I don't want any lines which I don't I don't want to see any lines, I'm just going to go around it with my finger. So it becomes completely straight. Now comes the part where we use this syringe. As I said, it is a bit too big for this purpose. I'm just going to try. I have filled just normal water in it. And I'm going to try to put drops on top of the dandelion clock. So let's see if this works. Oh yes, it worked. So, I'm going to leave it at that. And now I'm going to set up my camera and then get back to you. So now I've got my setup ready and I'm going to show you exactly how I've done it or what the setup is right now. And then we can start shooting. So basically, that's our dandelion thing there on the plate. And I've got my camera set up so close because of the extension tube it's got to be close and then I've got my flash and this paper as a reflector it's going to stand here here so 
and by bending it so or so I can increase and decrease the value of light that's going to hit. Why am I bouncing the light? Because it's going to give me a really really nice effect. You will see when you see the photograph. I've set my flash to 1 by 32 at 50 zoom. I mean this is just hit and trial. You can keep trying. I've tried a few photographs and that's why I decided on setting up my camera at 1 to 1 200th of a second at f20 and ISO 100. So that's what I'm going to shoot it at and let's see how it comes out. So let's see how this is going to look like if I did not use the flash at all. And here we go. And that's how it's going to be completely black screen so let's turn our flash on and we're going to start with the flash so flashes isn't in place I'm not going to touch my camera at all because that's going to mess with my focus so I've got the reflector and the flash on and let's click this is what we got it's pretty decent I'm going to bend the reflector a bit up and the light gets a bit less then we get a bit more light quite happy with the result actually what we see here really nice it's sharp we can check that look at this it's quite beautiful oh wow now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use these books which I brought this kind of books very colorful and let's see what difference will they make Let's see. Oh, not good. <laughs> not good at all. Whoops. Nope. So that's telling me that it's not going to work. So we need plain paper basically. It should be colored. Right. So basically we need completely plain paper as the reflector. Well, I don't have any plain paper right now which is colored, but I do have some folders. This kind of folders. I'm going to try that. Let's see. And it seems like it works well. It's not so bad. It's a bit darker, yeah. If I have it a bit far away, let's see. This is too dark. Closer. I mean, you can always play around with the lighting. This is better. This is really good. So, you can always play around with the light. Push it forward, push it closer, tilt it this way and that so once you've taken these photographs you can retouch in Lightroom or Photoshop although they don't need so much retouching but should you wish to and you can play around with the lighting and anything different and you don't have to always use just these uh, dandelion clocks you can use something else as well that's all in today's video I hope you learned something as did I and I'm definitely going to shoot a bit more with these things and if you like this video don't forget to give it a like if it's your first time on this channel click that subscribe button it doesn't cost a penny and hopefully we're going to keep learning together and grow together just like that one Lee Hall thank you very much till next time bye bye